Well, good day guys. We're off. We're at the homestead. We're not going to be spending time in the small cabin in the woods. We're going to head down to the log cabin. I want to say first off that this video is sponsored by Athletic Greens. We'll talk more about that later. First of all, we need to do a little bit of leg work. So let's get right into it. We're at the back 40 of the log cabin. I'm going to do a little bit of homework before I get situated. Just came over to the creek and it's flooded pretty darn good. And it looks like there's a nice come up and patch in here where the beaver, maybe it's a beaver, I don't know. I'm not really sure, but I got the trail camera to find out. I'm gonna set the camera up here on the bank. And what I'm hoping to do is actually gather a little bit of intel. Then we should be able to set a trap for it. And maybe we'll get a difecta, a double fecta. I am out here looking for deer. It is deer season. It is beaver season too. And we're gonna eat whatever we're gonna catch. So we got some beaver call gland lure and we're just going to put some on the stick. Nice big glob of it. We're just going to put it right here, just up on the edge there. And uh, any beaver is going to be very bothered by that smell. And then we should be able to capture it here on the camera. Let it do the work for us. It can scout while we're busy trying to get meat other ways. The off grid log cabin. I spent an overnight here a couple of weeks ago with uh, Courtney, my wife, and I thought it would be pretty cool to take you guys on a solo adventure, just you and me, and do a deer hunt. If there's anything I've learned by doing all these survival challenges is that our diet, our modern diet, has gotten very simple over the years, and it's probably missing on a lot of the things that we would have gotten from a more broad-based, forager-based diet, and that's where Athletic Greens comes into play. Athletic Greens is comprehensive and a complete daily nutrition supplement that's gonna help your body work better for you. I've had some experience already with Athletic Greens. I'm gonna tell you my concentration levels have improved dramatically. I don't feel like I'm waning in energy partway through the day. And I feel like my immune system is definitely getting the support that it needs to shake and drink. Mm. It's tasty too. As you guys know, I've been having problems with my digestion for almost a year now. Uh, several years back, I learned that I was gluten intolerant, uh, lactose intolerant, just a whole mess of things. And it really affects everything that you do for your concentration, your mood, energy. So I discovered that I was probably vitamin deficient. Thankfully, I found a product called Athletic Greens. It has 75 ingredients covering just about all of the things that your body really needs one scoop 12 ounces i mix that and i drink this before i eat anything in the day on an empty stomach that's going to provide maximum absorption and get my day started off properly then it's just a matter of shaking and drinking and let me tell you the product tastes good so once you've opened up your package you dump them in the canister the canister goes in your cabinet so guys, go get your greens. Use the link down below in the description or use athleticgreens.com slash thewoodedbeardsman. That's gonna get you one year supply of vitamin D, immune boosting vitamin D, and it's gonna give you five additional free travel packs, which makes it all that much more convenient. So if you go the way a weekend, you don't have to bring the entire lot with you. Although to be honest, it's a lot easier than carrying a giant medicine cabinet with you. And it tastes good too. Oh man, that's good. I really do look forward to having my drink every day. It makes me feel like I'm doing something that my body needs. I want to try to kind of survive off the land here if I can. I get a deer, I get a deer. Um, I also got wind that there's a, probably a beaver down at the other end. Uh, but for now, I want to get a fire started, get this nicely heated up. I'm going to go on a hunt this evening and then I'm going to go on a hunt again tomorrow morning. So let's get this cabin rocking heated warmed up we built this all last last year basically it was supposed to be a sugar shack and it turned out into be a beautiful uh pretty much a one one man two man Courtney and i were able to sleep on this uh twin bed i think it's it's a twin not a single but uh we'll get some firewood straightened out here and we're gonna make this our nice cozy home for the next couple of days or until we get ourselves some food from the land well, I can learn some new tricks from Kevin. This is a lot easier way to start a fire. Let me tell you what. There we go. Lights. Ah. 
as you can see it's pretty cozy in here it's like i don't know maybe 10 10 by 8 or so but it was the size of the logs that we had when we built it and these all these logs came basically from up the hill <laughs> and we dragged them all down the hill and then we we're going to put the boiler here which is actually outside right now and this was going to be a sugar shack but we thought you know what it's better use of the space if we can actually live in here so this could be like the manor the person who who boils the sap can live here so i talked to browning i told him i was a really big fan of their shotgun their wicked wing wicked wing shotgun that's the one i use all the time for grouse i've been using it for duck geese um, but i last year i shot i was shooting my 870 express remington it's a pretty common gun for around here you can only shoot shotguns you can't shoot rifles it has something to do with the range although the range on these guns are getting is getting better and better every time so this is the browning silver and then i've outfitted it with a vortex scope and we have the tact cam now the tact cam has changed how i film everything because now i don't bring the big camera with me most of the time i don't use it i don't try to get the deer all lined up in the in the camera it's way too much work for one person so if you guys are looking for an alternative definitely go with the tact cam um, and this is the fts so the fts basically mounts on the back of the cup you find the right size for your scope and you mount that and then you allen key wrench it down and the same thing with the camera and then the use your phone there's a wi-fi setting on there and the wi-fi will talk to the camera so you'll get a live feed of exactly how it's set up so i kind of set mine up a little bit uh off offset a little bit because i i want to be able to touch all the things i need over here to load and, and things like that and every scope is going to be different every gun's going to be a little bit different you can mount the fts on the opposite side too um although you're not going to get that eye reveal that you want necessarily so when you're leaning in you might have you know this part of this the uh fts on over here on that side um so it's really up to you how you want to do it I mean, you can have it facing up as well it doesn't really matter how you do it because you're just going to take you're going to take the camera which fits inside the shoe there and you're just going to turn it around and, and help with your uh, with your Wi-Fi signal, checking the, how the camera orients itself. It can, it can go any way you want. So I've got this pretty well set up. Basically, I'm hanging out here. I'm chilling out because the deer don't really move here during the daylight hours. We're basically relegated to the last half hour and the first hour of the day. At this rate, I don't know if we're gonna <laughs> have any insulation left. That red squirrel really feels like it should be making a nest up in the roof there and now that that fire is going nicely we're going to close up it is chilly it's not super chilly but it's getting colder it's that fall crisp the kind of thing that i like i wanted to show you the uh the boiler here this thing kevin made out of an oiled oil drum i think we call he ended up calling it steamy because it's got a hat on here and the hat basically just keeps the water from dripping inside but you can see basically how it works is it's a giant oh if i can lift it's a giant vat oh i can't even lift the other one anyway underneath there there's another panel and uh, that's just to keep the water out for now as you can see we much better use of this cabin having the boiler sort of out here under this awning and you can just cook all cook your sap all day long and you're good to go Let's see if we're starting to warm up in here a little bit but uh, we got to burn off some of that excess moisture in here to get the temperature up and running. And uh, as you can see out the back window here, you could probably shoot a deer just from the window. I don't know if you could tell on the other side here, but you can see all the way down the trail. And that's the way I'm going to head later on this evening to do my deer hunt. Just something about this that I needed. Just the simplicity of everything. I got no internet. I got no TV. I got nothing. It's just me. And aside from the just the allure of a fire, it's just the fact that it kind of reminds you of summer. Because it's cold outside. And a fire is like having the sun of the winter. <laughs> and that can be a metaphor just watching that fire flicker I mean you can't watch the sun flicker <laughs> but you can definitely feel the warmth 
of the sun on your face and on your skin. And I'm not quite to the point where I can take my jacket out, but I'm getting pretty close. But I haven't uh, taken time to myself in a long time. Just focusing on, focusing too much on all of the junk that's going on right now in the world. And uh, it's just amazing that when you turn the TV off, you turn the internet off, it goes away. And that tells me that we have a problem. Because this is, the problem isn't that we're looking at, you know, the V or the other V. <laughs> the problem is that we're looking at the people who are looking at the V and the other V. And you guys know what I mean. We can't say those words because of the people. And so what are we doing anymore? Now it's just people versus people. And it really makes you wonder, why are we doing this to each other? And a lot of it is just motivated by fear, greed, corruption, and just nasty elements of human nature. And I still feel fortunate to be born in this generation, but I am very scared for the next one. The uh, earth has not <laughs> been tested with this level of human density. And that's what we're seeing in the V and the V. <laughs> that's what we're coming to terms with. And what people with power are going to decide to do with those circumstances is frightening to me. Absolutely frightening. I hope we get better. I really do. I hope we can I hope we can find the middle ground here and I just ruined my moment <laughs> by thinking about the real world. Introduced to you guys to the update to the pond a while ago. I guess in the last video, it's a lot bigger and it's a lot deeper. And we've got a formal, informal, formal contract with Linden Trout Hatchery. They're gonna give us he says we can probably put about 30 fish in there. We might stretch it, we'll see. I said, I said 30 to 50 and he said about 30. We'll get some good sized one. All right guys, let's do this. It's about uh, four o'clock right now. Dark at uh, 6.15 and uh, that should give us plenty of time. I don't typically go out. Well, if I can time it right, I go with like the last, the last hour, the last hour and a half. Um, typically go out an hour before sunrise um because they can shoot half an hour before sunrise so i want things to settle down so kind of the idea right today is actually to let things settle down a little bit so two hours um it is probably the peak of the rut now november 2nd is when i'm filming this so this is exactly when the deer start really start to move um i got ammo i got my gun I have a flashlight. Uh, I got my bag and my flashlight all in here. We'll close it up. And I gotta go this way. Close it up. And uh, we'll keep the damper a little bit open, not all the way. I think that should be good. We're gonna leave the lights on. And uh, I think I've got everything. You guys can enjoy the walk over with me. Well, I'm not gonna talk too much on the way over, but. Uh, I want to take you guys along to see what I'm up, up against. It's not a long walk. That's the benefit of being on the property with the deer here. And I'm actually always kind of watching. The, like, it could be a deer show up at any time because we are right in the thick of things. All right, guys. I'll see you in the stand.
So this is what the stand looks like. Nothing yet. Lots of squirrels. Oh, there's only five minutes left. But I can't see anything anyway. <gasps> Except for my breath. Fly back to the cabin. Sleep. Start all over again tomorrow. There's a scrape there. Oh, plastic cabin's holding up all right. <laughs> Turned out good. I got my turkey blind over here. I guess if the weather got really bad, I could deer hunt out of it too. But I haven't seen any turkeys yet this fall. I don't know where they went. Well, that was a pretty un uneventful night. But that's kind of how that stand goes. I don't know if I've ever seen, no I have, I've seen a buck one time bow hunting this last year go by that tree stand in the evening. It's mostly a morning stand. So I'm not super concerned by the fact that I did not see anything. So, be back at it tomorrow morning. It is so nice to come back to a nice uh, warm cabin. Don't worry guys, I got pajama pants underneath. That's the secret <laughs> to staying warm in the winter, pajama pants. Put pajama pants under your regular pants and then you're all set to go. You don't even have to, uh, <laughs> you don't even have to undress, you're ready for bed. Got the hood ready for bed. And uh, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. I am super tired and I have to get up really early tomorrow. So, ah, tuck in. Man, is it nice to have bed, bedding, everything all set to go here. I mean, the only thing I'm missing really <laughs> is a clap on, clap off. <laughs> so I, got, I still gotta go hit the button. <laughs> all right, well, I guess that's it guys. Good night. Uh, can you still see me? <laughs> no, you can't. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning, guys. Uh, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm a little, a little late, late, little late getting going. But uh, better late than never. My alarm did not go off. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, let's make the most of it. You never know. Oh, good morning, guys. I kind of overslept. I get into the tree stand. Let's get settled in. See if we can get ourselves a deer. Here's the squirrel stand right here. Let's climb up.
Oh my god. <laughs> oh dear. I just snuck up just down here. <laughs> right below my stand. And I was not ready at all. I uh I had my earmuffs down here. <laughs> it was literally right there, like 10 steps down there. And my gun whew, was right here. <laughs> just up against the tree here. So I had to maneuver myself and then she got to about here and she took a step back cause she, I think she smelt my wind uh, just coming down this way. And then she went up around here and I was able to get the uh, gun all lined up. <laughs> and uh, she just went that way. And uh, I think she went down right there. I, I'm pretty sure she went down. <laughs> yes. Oh. oh man, that happened so fast. Last year I was shooting my Remington 870 and uh, that one was not firing good for me. And uh, I spent a lot of time in the stand. I had two shots on deer and I wasn't able to recover it. <laughs> that sucker went down hard. Oh. Man, I gotta check the time. Because that was, that was late. I wasn't about to give up on the hunt today. 8.40, sunrise is uh, 7, 7.30. So about an hour and 10 minutes into the hunt. I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes and uh, I'll go check, but I'm pretty sure she went down right there. She was, she was skating. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I tucked that right up, right up inside the boiler room. Oh, <sighs> yes. Uh, now I got the shakes. All right, let's go see if we can find the deer. Should be just right there. We got some good hanging weather. Anyway, got a nice temperature. I'm gonna show you where the deer was when I first spotted her. <laughs> we're 10 yards, not even 10 yards, right here. Uh, I threw some apples from my apple tree down over there, so that's probably what she was looking for. <laughs> you see the tree stands just right there. Literally right here. That's a one footprint there, one footprint there. <laughs> but I didn't shoot her right here. I uh, waited till she moved over this way a little bit. Because I didn't want to shoot straight down. And plus, I actually couldn't. Had to wait till she moved away a little bit. Whew. All right, let's go see if we can find ourselves a deer. Uh, that was a pretty short trail. Tree stands right there, I don't know if you can see it. And then for reference point, there's the plastic cabin just over here. <laughs> and there's our deer. <laughs> yes, I got the monkey off my back. It's a good sized doe. I'd say it's probably a year and a half. But I'm not gonna be picky this year. I wasn't gonna be picky. I was gonna shoot whatever came by. And the blood trail was perfect. <laughs> you couldn't ask for anything to work out any better than that. Oh. But of course, hunting is just one thing. Now the work begins, as they say. Well, there we go, guys. That was a successful hunt. I'm uh, just gonna see if Kevin's around, see if he can get me some help. Because uh, dragging a deer through the forest is a lot of work and a lot more work than you would expect. So see, we can't get some uh, war manpower. Well, back here at the deer, we got in touch with Kevin. He says he's busy, but I got someone better anyway. I got his uh, helper, friend, Don. He's gonna come out here. 
give me a hand we're going to get it loaded up on the sled the toboggan it does a good job of sliding deer if you ever dragged the deer before maybe you haven't but it can be a pain in the neck the dawn fell in the creek <laughs> completely how wet are you oh i'm not i'm not uh you're not through no just your boots most of just my boots but <laughs> a little bit maybe a little bit down there no, I brought it all the way to the log cabin and then realized the <laughs> the log, the meat pole is up top. What do you think about that drag, Don? It's pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty tough going. A lot of people think that hunting is just shoot, bang, done, meat in the fridge. Yeah. But now the work starts. That's so right. So yeah. dragging it through that was uh, <laughs> a chore. Yeah, it was a good workout. And then uh, the ratchet strap around the sled, the sled works good, but the ratchet strap is catching on roots, and, stuff, roots yeah. and tree stumps and everything so it kept falling off so we had to reset a bunch of times and we'll bring it up to the meat pole and uh grab some chunks of meat off there and hopefully get a get a bite to eat before it gets too far on in the day now i gotta gut it but you guys can't watch that so get the back straps out and you can join me then so if you don't know about the tenderloins the tenderloins is basically on the inside part of the cavity so you can imagine uh, not the outside, that's the back straps. That's where you get the majority of meat, the good meat down here on the back. Oh, we did pretty good. We got two, two front legs. I'm gonna turn that into sausage. Uh, this is the rest of the sausage. That's just the off cuts. I've got the calves in there. Uh, neck meat, there wasn't much on the neck, small deer. Um, and then we got the back hocks full here. And uh, there's multiple mu different muscles in there. So I'm gonna take it back, put it in the fridge and then what I'll do is I'll work on it over the next couple of days to get it wrapped up properly into meal sized portions. I don't want to put something that big in the in the freezer because I pull it out and I'm not going to be able to eat all. So I want to make it portions that, that I will eat. So, you know, parts of three. And uh, was this the, what was this? This was the, this is part of the back as well. The back leg. So this is all the back leg, front leg and um, trimmings. And I also have the carcass here, the carcass I'm going to drag at the back. I'm going to put at the squirrel stand and then maybe I'll get a coyote come in. Hooligans Forge, that's it. They're right on the knife. Hooligans Forge, he made this custom, custom made it for me. And it was sharp enough to do everything. And I do need to get rid of this gut pile. It is pretty rotund. <laughs> it is a rotund gut pile. We can leave it there for a few days and see what happens. See, it's... Uh, it's coming for a ride. Some other animal is going to eat it. It's the easiest part to eat out of a deer, especially like a fresh deer. The coyote and, and other animals like that, they'll, they'll eat the whole deer, but they won't eat the whole deer on the first day because they have a hard time chewing things. <laughs> Whew, ah, well, we've got that fire rocking now. We've got a cast iron pan here. We've got our tenderloins here, probably more than I can eat. I'll, I'll probably, you know what, I'm gonna eat an entire tenderloin because <laughs> I think I deserve it. The rest I'm gonna bring home to my family. Now, if somebody else shows up, I might have them uh, partake in the spoils. We've got, of course, the wadobo. You guys can grab that, it's linked up down below. Sales are good, they're, they're steaming, steaming good. And they're, um, we've got repeat sales, so people are really, really liking it. I'm just gonna do a simple cook, I think. I'm just gonna cut up, cut up the tenderloin, fry it in oil with wadobo, because you can't beat the freshness of this kind of meat. From the animal to the pan in just a couple of hours.
Fresh off the grill. <laughs> you can believe it. It's been probably about, I don't know, man. I want to say two, maybe two, maybe three years. Well, it's been two for sure. Maybe three years since I've eaten venison. Oh my God. Oh man. Dude, that is so freaking tender. No knife required. Oh, look at that. Oh, so good. Looks like we only got two impressions on there and they're both of me. So I don't know, there could still be a beaver here, but he didn't, he didn't come visit my, my scent stick. So I'll keep an eye out for any new sign. Now it could be that the beaver is way over there and didn't catch wind of it. There's always that possibility. Well guys, it's been a few days since the hunt. Thought you guys would be interested to see what happened to that gut pile, whether it's still around and uh, what made use of it, if anything. And I can tell you right now that it's been disturbed 100%. There's quite a bit of it left. It's only been about two days. So obviously nothing big has come through. I'm just going to check the trail camera. Big by big, I mean coyote. Because a coyote or a pack of coyotes would clean that right out. A whole bunch of little critters, but mostly crows. So the crows have been in here. And funny enough, actually one deer came through here, a doe. <laughs> I don't know if it was alerted by the gut pile. I don't think so. I think it was more alerted by the browning. It's got a light on here. And so when it turns on, it, uh, the deer can see it. I'm sure at some point, a big game animal is gonna come through here. And we'll keep check with that camera. I hope you enjoy this episode. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.